Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on May 30th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather up to eight earthquakes, volcanoes, and as well, world weather. Starting out here, looking at our sun, solar dynamics observatory imagery, 304 angstroms, not much activity. It's been actually pretty quiet the last 24 hours. And solar X-ray flux remains in B range. No major sunspot activity, nor cresting. Looking at incoming imagery now, just a lot of plasma filaments dancing around the surfaces of our sun. Quick look at the last 48 hours outgoing. There's that large plasma filament that was erecting from the surface. Showed in update from two days ago as well. A small CME there from C-Class Solar Flare right there. And that is visible on the ISWA space prediction. Looking at multi-spectrum here. Keeping an eye on that region. That's where that C-Flare was as well. Watching plasma filaments in the northern hemisphere. Really getting organized. Let's hope they stay intact. Looking at 171 angstroms, no coronal holes showing, nor cresting. But we are in the middle of our coronal hole wind stream still. Let's have a look at our solar x ray flex as it is down into B range after jumping up to C overnight. Geomagnetic activity is slightly elevated, KP3. Real-time solar wind, we're coming in at 400 and, or 560 kilometers per second. And it topped out about 615 kilometers per second today. And that is indicative of a coronal hole wind stream. Looking at our magnetosphere cut planes, showing how our Earth's magnetosphere is handling this space weather event. Looking at a bit of a backdraft there on the back side of the sun. Did you guys notice that? It's kind of going the wrong way. Bit of a vacuum effect, I think. Iswa space, tra predi space prediction spiral showing that CME blast just missing Mercury and as well Bepi satellite. Schumann resonance for today, a power of 50. Healthy spike today and overnight. For a Schumann resonance. Wow. So amplitude of 50, quality of 8, power of 26. Now let's get to earthquakes as that is pretty quiet as well. We're only sitting at about 160 earthquakes in the past 24-hour period. So quiet. And our largest earthquake today was a 4.9. But most of the activity was here in South America. There, Kamakal, Argentina, 4.5. Just recently, as well, a 4.2 San Antonio de la Cobros. So lots of activity there. A lot of earthquakes here still from yesterday. 3.6 to report on the West Coast. Northern California. Petrolia, California. Minor seismicity increasing through Alaska. That's where most of the action is right now. As well as seeing some action in Tonga region. Here is our deepest earthquake, 250 kilometer depth, 4.9. As well, the Philippines seeing a lot of activity today, 4.9, 4.6 yesterday. As well, a 4.7 there in Hirara, Japan. 4.2 reported in Iran. Sarpol. And as well, a pretty rare earthquake here reported the United Kingdom in Pries. A 3.6 earthquake rang out and is being reported here. So a pretty rare area for an earthquake. Heads up, my UK friends. Having a look here at the last seven days for earthquakes across the planet, we did see some pretty big shakers this week. And that was due to the Mercury retrograde in which this was all forecasted in the last volcanic activity report. If you haven't seen the most recent one, please check it out. That was released today. Now let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing most recent satellite imagery and as well most recent volcanoes getting updated. We have extreme weather breaking out again 
across central and northeastern United States. So Duluth, Minnesota, Grand Forks, Grand Forks, North Dakota, Twin Cities, Minnesota, looking at many tornado warnings, about 20 alerts going off here through Wisconsin and Minnesota. So thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected there. Let's have a look at the most recent volcanoes getting updated today. Reventador in Ecuador. Look at all these tornado warnings. 103 active alerts. Wow. So heads up, everybody. Reventador in Ecuador. Decono in Indonesia. Fuego in Guatemala. Sangue in Ecuador. Sabancaya in Peru. Nevada Ruiz, Colombia. Swiss and Ajima, Japan. Manam, Papua New Guinea, Bezimiani, Russia. So yeah, very active planet, folks. Active in erupting 52 volcanoes across the world and about 11 getting updated just today. We also have one tropical storm to talk about. Hurricane Agatha is alive and did not turn into a Category 3. Almost dead last night. Category 2 making landfall as we speak. And we'll see how strong it reforms in the Gulf and heads towards Florida. Stay tuned for the forecast coming right up. Looking across the world, there is a lot of cloud cover over the Pacific right now. Three very large lows as well being wrapped up is all that SO2 from Bezimieni. If you haven't seen the update, please check it out. A lot of cloud cover moving into parts of northwestern Australia. Monsoon rains continue through Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia. A couple pop-up thunderstorms through Africa in the last couple days and big low off the coast of Spain. Let's have a look at the weather forecast brought to you by Venture Sky and Daily Events Worldwide. Starting out here, home base, Ontario, Canada. And here is the low that is the culprit for all of these tornado warnings across the United States. And that's going to head northward into Manitoba. And then watching the long-range forecast here, this is going to turn in to a blizzard after it hits the Hudson Bay and then heads back down into Manitoba. But watch for storms to develop here through Ontario and eastern United States. Tuesday to, through till Thursday. And then here's that big low I was talking about. Bringing blizzard-like conditions to Manitoba and snow to Saskatchewan. By the way, it was snowing in Colorado yesterday. I want to thank a subscriber who got into the chat and let me know that. Here's the forecast for Hurricane Agatha. Looks like it penetrates Mexico Friday, Saturday. And then by Sunday, we'll be making landfall on Florida, heading up, rip, racing up pretty much the east coast of the Atlantic. Overlooking South America. Daily evaporation rains continue, possibly heavy at times through Venezuela and northern Brazil, Colombia. But then watch for this low to come into parts of Argentina this week. You could, be, could see some extreme weather there. Torrential downpours, hail, and strong winds. Overlooking Africa. Daily evaporation rain and heavy storms starting to develop as things really start to heat up there again. <clears throat> Overlooking Europe. You've got a low hanging out just south of Finland, Sweden. Waves of moisture moving eastward and then a low penetrating through the United Kingdom that will bring widespread rain and thunderstorms through Central Europe. Overlooking Southeast Pacific, or sorry, Southwest Pacific, Southeast Asia. I'm actually really surprised that there are no typhoons forming yet. Mostly just daily evaporation rains and no major systems to talk about. Then we get to Australia and we've got some Pretty windy and wet conditions moving in from that big low, northwest Australia heading in. 
and as well a big low bringing waves of moisture to parts of eastern Australia and as well some pretty cold temperatures. So watch for all this to start Thursday of Friday, June 2nd into 3rd. Those cold temperatures are really going to be moving in. Having a look here at windy, the forecast for temperatures, minus 3 just north of Sydney. I want to thank everybody for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, share with your family. Thanks for watching. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.